In this example here, we have water being sucked in by a pump, and that pump transfers that water above this hill at an elevation difference of 90 feet above the hill. We're told the mass flow rate of the water is actually going to be 10 pounds per second, and we have no kinetic energy, no change in temperature, no change in pressure on either side of the pump. And then we're also told that the power required by the pump is 1.68 horsepower. So what we need to do is we need to find the rate of heat transfer between the pump and the surroundings, also in horsepower and BTU per minute. So here we have a schematic. I just simplified it a little bit just to show you a, uh, a more simple visual. So you have the power coming in at 1.68 horsepower. You have some sort of heat transfer. We don't know uh, what it is yet. And then the pressure, temperature, kinetic energy are equal. Change in elevation, Z2 minus Z1 must be Z2 minus Z1. Z1 minus Z2 would be negative. 90 feet and then the mass flow rate of 10 pounds per second. So the easiest way to find the horsepower of a single inlet, single exit control volume would be using the energy balance equations. Remember that you have zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy H1 minus H2 plus the velocity change of V1 squared minus V2 squared and divide them both by two plus, sorry for this broken equation here, plus the change in potential energy, which would be the gravity times the change in elevation of Z1 minus Z2. It's always what comes in minus what comes out. So it's always one minus two. So this is your equation here. Luckily, we can simplify this a bit. So we're looking for the heat transfer, so we're going to keep that as is. And then we were given the power, 1.68, mass flow rate also given. Now when we reach over the enthalpies, T1 equals T2, same thing with the pressure, so therefore we can go ahead and eliminate the enthalpies. And then the kinetic energy is also conserved here, so we don't have any change in velocity, it's negligible. So the only thing we have left is the change in potential energy. So now if we simplify this, we'll have zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times the change in elevation Z1 minus Z2, or the potential energy. So now if we solve for the heat transfer, we'll have that the heat transfer Q dot equals the power W dot minus the mass flow rate times the change in gravity times elevation Z1 minus Z2. Now, if we start building our equation here, we'll have that the heat transfer equals the power, which was 1.68 horsepower. Make sure you keep a negative sign on the front, though, because it's a power requirement, not a power generation device. So negative power minus the heat transfer, uh, minus the mass flow rate, sorry, 10 pounds per second. And multiply that by the gravity. We were told to just use 32 feet per second squared, so we'll just use that, and times the change in elevation. So we have Z2 minus Z1 equals 90, so therefore Z1 minus Z2 must equal negative 90 feet. So now before you carry out your calculation, notice that the power is in horsepower, and then this whole mess over here is in some other unit. So we just need to make sure that both units are in horsepower so we can actually add them up together. So it looks like if we were to multiply this out, we would actually have pound mass times feet squared per second cubed. By the way, I would actually recommend that when you're using English units, you get in the habit of writing pound mass and pound force where applicable. So the mass flow rate here is actually pound M for pound mass. So essentially what we need to convert is we need to convert from pound mass feet squared per second cubed to horsepower. So the easiest way to start this conversion would be to first break down the horsepower. So a horsepower, one horsepower, equals 550 foot pound force per second. And it's important to differentiate between pound mass and pound force because they're not the same thing. So now what we need to do is we need to break down this 550 foot-pound force per second. Remember, 550 foot-pound force per second equals one horsepower. So now 550 foot-pound force, also known as one horsepower per second, equals 550 
times 32.2 foot squared pound mass per second cubed. So all I did here was, if you recall that one pound force, a single pound force equals 32.2 pound mass feet per second squared. If you could see that, I multiplied a foot by a foot to get a foot squared. And then the second squared times a second gives you a second cubed, and the pound force turns into a pound mass. You do have a conversion factor of 32.2. So this whole thing right here, this 550 all the way down here, that all equals one horsepower. So let's rewrite this equation down here. So we'll have that the heat transfer, Q dot, equals the horsepower, or the power, sorry, of negative 1.68 HP, minus the mass flow rate of 10 pounds per second, times the gravity of 32.2, or actually it says to use 32, so we'll just keep it as 32 feet per second squared, Multiply that by the change in elevation, 90 feet, negative 90 feet. And now we have to multiply that by our conversion factor. So we have one horsepower is what we're looking for. That's the target. And in one horsepower, you have 550 times 32.2 feet squared pound mass per second cubed. And I almost forgot that we actually have a pound mass here. So pound mass. And now let's see if I can cancel out all these units and see if I get a horsepower on the right side. So pound mass and pound mass cancel out. And then you have feet squared over here, multiply together and feet squared on the bottom, cancel out. You have second squared times second gives you second cubed, which cancels out this second cubed. And now you're left with horsepower. So now if you just plug this into your calculator, do negative 1.68 minus 10 times 32 times negative 90 divided by 550 divided by 32.2, you'll have that the heat transfer Q dot equals negative 0.054 horsepower. And now to convert from horsepower to, I think it asked for BTU per minute, all we have to do is negative 0.054 horsepower and add in some conversion factors here. So we have 2545 BTU per hour in one horsepower. And now we have 60 minutes per one hour. Now the hour, hour cancel out and you're left with BTU per minute. Also the horsepower, horsepower cancel out. So when it's all said and done, plug it into your calculator and you'll have that Q dot, the heat transfer, equals negative 2.28 BTU per minute. Makes sense that it's negative because it's leaving the pump.